Hello everyone and welcome to the struggle to get Starship to land safely on Mars in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. I have done extensive testing during live streams and otherwise, and I finally think I have a landing script that works. It was a tricky business because first of all we have to get the balance on Starship right, its center of mass and center of lift have to be in exactly the right place, as far as I can tell, within one meter. So there's not a lot of fudge room. This current Starship has a load of 60 tons on the top end, but of course that varies. So we will have to make adjustments depending on that load. But here we go with the KOS script that is going to handle the whole business. We are not coming in straight from Earth, we are in orbit around Mars and landing. That keeps things more consistent. And also I think in general I'll be doing that in order to make it easier to hit a particular landing location. Coming in straight from Earth and uh, capturing and landing at the same time, it that's doable for like NASA or SpaceX, but I can't manage a direct landing at a particular spot like that because Mars has to be rotated in the right position for that to happen. So yeah, capturing into orbit first and then landing will be how I do this in Kerbal Space Program. Starship is a little bit hard to turn. Um, yeah, I, I think SpaceX's thrusters will be more powerful than what I have here, but on the bright side, because my RCS thrusters are not that powerful, they don't consume that much propellant as KOS sort of puffs them like this. It's actually only puffing them because we're in fizz warp here, I think. So yeah, it's a little bit inaccurate. But we do have a center of mass shifter on this one. We have no reaction wheel, there's realism overhaul, there's no funny business, and the numbers are as good as I can get them. But uh, the throttle range might be a little bit wider. But we do have a COM shifter that can shift uh, the center of mass from header tanks at the top to the main tanks, but we don't seem to need to use it. Uh, we will use it, but I'll show you what I mean when I say we don't seem to need to use it. But uh, that might help later on if it turns out that adding a different load to the top of it uh, shifts the center of mass by more than the one meter fudge room that we seem to have to keep it balanced. So I might retain it even if I don't think we need it just in case. So anyway, here we are coming in. You can see the pitch is getting lower and lower in the bottom right, the left hand corner. The pitch is getting sort of maxed out on the bottom end, which means it's trying to push the nose down, but it's increasingly struggling to do so. I decided to keep the balance such that that was the case. In other words, I could have moved the center of mass a little bit so that it'd be more balanced right now. But instead of doing that, I decided to let it get maxed out so that eventually what's going to happen is it's going to tilt straight up. And even without the center of mass shift or descent mode, if you will, uh, the engines will be able to turn it where it needs to go. So here we go, deviating from the 60 degree pitch that I have held it at coming in so far. And we'll probably modulate that pitch depending on how it's doing approaching its targeted landing site. That's a whole other business. Right now, we're just trying to land it safely. That's job one here. And so now you can see it's sort of flipped this way, which is fine. It's still getting a lot of drag, and we want it to get maximal drag during this phase. We don't really need it to get lift. The, the 60 degree pitch is so that I can control its trajectory and land in a particular place. By, but by this point, we really just need drag to slow down so that we use a minimal amount of propellant in order to uh, come to a stop and land. So it folds the fins, it drops the landing gear, that's, uh, I just used the Falcon landing gear. So, yeah, it was simpler that way, and I had more trust in its stability. Initially, we burn with the vacuum engines, but it turns it off below a certain velocity. That's just in case we're carrying a heavier load or more propellant, so that it can slow down more decisively. Uh, and here, it's modulating the thrust. Uh, in some cases, it'll wiggle a little bit, partly because the terrain might not be even and it's reading it based on the radar altitude. And at a certain point, it'll turn off one of the engines and we'll just use two. So here we are just on two engines. It may need to land on just one. It depends on the actual thrall range of the Raptor engines, which I'm not 100% sure on. And it does have to be sort of a suicide burn because otherwise, even at the lowest throttle, it'd start going up. So there we are sticking the landing sort of. It was a little bit rough, but it manages it. Uh, th I mean, this is always gotta be a little bit hard to stick the landing safely with, but 
Yep, there it is. The shaky ground sort of kills the mood of it, but anyway, it is there, and I look forward to maybe figuring out how to put it to more use now. It'll depend on the reliability of this, but I think the reliability of the script as far as landing it will be pretty good, except for tipping over problems, which you might have to adjust for. Uh, the question is whether we can land a whole bunch of stuff in the same place, and that's what I'm working on going forward. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.